In January 2021, I set up my first ever pair of independent trucks only to have the hanger on the front truck snap within only a few months. From that day on, I vowed never to touch independent trucks again and stay loyal to the company I've been riding for over 10 years and in my opinion is the best truck company in skateboarding, which is of course Thunder Trucks. I've come to learn that it's a common occurrence for independent axles or hangers to either bend or snap and the reason why the quality of their products have gone down so much is most likely because of a massive change that the company went through in 2018. I'm going to go over that in more detail in a second, but let's look at the independent forged hollow trucks and go over the main differences between independent trucks and thunder trucks and see why they are so different to each other. So with all the egg boards that I've been riding lately, this is a 9.4 inch board. I'm not riding anything smaller than a 9.1. So these 8.5 wide trucks that I have are just not cutting it anymore. They just sit too far in on these big boards, especially when I was riding that 10 inch board the other week. So I wanted to get these same hollow light trucks in a 161, which has an axle width of 9.1 but I just couldn't get my hands on any of them. So I decided to give Independent one last chance and go for their forged hollow trucks. These are in a 169, so that has the 9.125 axle width that I'm looking for. So that'll suit these boards perfectly. And these are basically the Independent equivalent of the Thunder hollow lights. But there are a lot of big differences between these two trucks and I'm gonna get into that now. So like I said, these are the Independent Stage 11 forged hollow trucks in a 169, which has a 9.125 axle width. These have hollow axles and hollow kingpins, as well as a forged base plate. So the standard independence axle width is 55 mil, but because of the forged base plate, it's made lighter and thinner, it makes it 53.5 mil high. The standard thunder axles sit at a 52 mil axle height, with their forged base plate being one mil thinner, so it sits at a 51 millimeter axle height if you're riding the hollow lights like I'm riding now. So independent trucks sit higher than thunders, with these being 2.5 millimeter higher than the ones I'm riding at the moment. A lot of you guys have told me that the forged hollow trucks from independent are actually heavier than the thunder standard trucks, which would lead us to assume that the hollows that independent make are much heavier than the hollows that thunder make since these are heavier than the standard thunders but let's get into the geometry of each truck and why they differ so much because that's the main point of difference so on independent trucks the axle sits closer to the center of the base plate with the thunder axle sitting further out closer to the edge of the base plate here that alone makes these trucks so much different to the way they perform the first major thing that's going to change is because the axle sits closer to the center of the base plate on indies that's going to shorten your overall wheelbase since the axle are sitting closer that means your wheels are going to be closer together now having a shorter wheelbase is obviously going to help you pop your tail faster and your turning circle is going to be harsher too because they're closer together you're going to be able to make sharper turns another major thing that having the axle sitting in further is going to help is when you're doing nose slides and tail slides i myself experience this a lot when i'm doing back tails on ledges because the axle sits closer to the outside of the base plate here when i'm doing back tails a lot of my wheels are sticking and rubbing along the side of the ledge so because these are sitting further in the base plate will be hitting the ledge a lot and not so much of your wheel will be sliding across the ledge when you're doing no slides and tail slides. So I feel like that's going to be a big benefit for me because I've had a lot of trouble trying to find out which wheels to use to kind of counteract this problem with the Thunder trucks. So they're the main differences between Independence and Thunders. And since I've been riding these Thunder Hollow lights for a while now, I'm going to be able to make a very detailed comparison of how these both perform compared to each other. So I'm going to set these up right now, let you guys know how long it takes for these to wear in, how they feel first of all, and then I'm going to test all the differences I just listed. And then I'll go over what Independent did in 2018 that will change their company forever and why the quality of their products just keep going down because of it. So let's go. Oh man. That was good. 
Sorry, G. All right, first impressions of these trucks, they're so much heavier than my previous setup because they were eight and a half inch trucks. These are 9.1 wide, so there's obviously a lot more truck, even though these are hollow. It wasn't too heavy to skate, but I just had to get used to the feeling of having a heavier board. So that was the first thing I noticed. Second thing was how loose these are because I run my trucks exactly how I get them. I don't tighten or loosen my kingpin. When I get them, I just ride them and wear them in and pretty much never touch the kingpin bolt. So these felt a lot looser because they are brand new, but it wasn't like I was losing control. There were still heaps of Responsive. And as loose as they were, I still felt like I was fully in control. But that could be because of the geometry of where the kingpin sits. These turn sharper, so it could be a lot looser, but the stability of them is still there, which felt nice. The hardest thing was doing the back 50 on the ledge just then. There's so much more hanger space here to lock in my grinds, but I felt like I was slipping back and forth between heels and toes on the ledge just then. So they feel good. They're just a little bit of getting used to. I'm going to skate a bit more of the rails and ledges here just to get used to the lock-in and try and figure out where I need to lock in and where I have to have my weight. Then I'll talk about why independence business has changed so much and why why the quality of their products have dropped. So after a while, I got used to where the pinch point on my trucks are for certain grinds, just because the hanger width is so different to what I've experienced before. But it does feel good looking down at my board and knowing right on the edge of the board there, on the inside of the wheel, is my pinch point. So when I was riding the 8.5 trucks, they sat a lot further in. I couldn't visually see from the top where my wheels were, so I was kind of just ollieing and guessing where the locking point was. But now from the top view, I can kind of see the axle nut so I know the distance of where my hanger is and where I can lock in. So it feels comfortable now, but it took a little bit of getting used to. So in 2018, independent moved all their manufacturing out to China and coincidentally that is when all of their products dropped in quality. So they used to be poured in San Francisco like Venture and Thunder and Venture and Thunder is still poured in San Francisco in America so they were high quality products and all of the materials and the way it's put together is like really top notch. So a lot of people have lost respect for independent because they've moved their manufacturing over to China. It might be cheaper for them to produce their products now but they are a cheaper quality product. Like I said at the beginning my hanger cracked on me the first time I rode these trucks. A lot of people have problem with the axle bending or the hangers breaking off or the kingpin snapping so this is me giving these trucks a second chance and I'm hoping that doesn't happen to me on these trucks but only time will tell and they feel good at the moment though I'll say that much for them so now that I've got the lock-in points on my grinds kind of figured out I want to test how it feels doing no slides and tail slides because the axle sits in further I've got some base plate clearance that can slide on the side of the ledge rather than my wheels just gripping to the side and then I need to test the wheelbase because these egg boards have tapered kicks they whip really fast when I'm doing tricks like tray flips and three shafts and big spins and stuff like that. So now that my wheelbase has been closed and made shorter, I'm wondering how my flip tricks and the whipping of my board's gonna go. So no slides and tail slides first, and then I'm gonna get into the flip tricks after that.
actually been skating these trucks for a little over a month now and I really like them for the bigger size egg boards that I've been riding. So all the differences I talked about in the beginning between these and Thunder trucks, the weight was pretty incomparable since I went from an 8.5 inch wide truck to a 9.125 inch truck. These were obviously gonna feel heavier because they are bigger trucks, but I pretty much got used to the weight increase as I was warming up. I didn't feel any difference at all with these being 2.5 millimeter higher than the Thunder trucks. My ollies, nollies and flip tricks all felt the same. I didn't notice any difference. With the geometry of these trucks giving me a slightly smaller wheelbase, I didn't actually feel the difference of that either when it comes to all of those scooping tricks that I was talking about, which was really interesting to me because having a smaller wheelbase and the tapered kicks of an egg board, I thought all of my tray flips and big spins were just gonna whip out of control. But I feel like going up to bigger trucks, the extra weight of these kind of compensated for that. So my tray flips and three shelves and all of that didn't whip out of control because my setup actually had more weight to it. But the main differences I found and what I already expected from the axle of the truck sitting closer to the center of the base plate was my back tail is getting better and the ability to carve and turn sharper got better as well. So having that little bit more base plate clearance and not having so much of my wheel sliding hard up against the side of the ledge really did help out the back tails a lot. And the trucks being able to carve and turn better really helps at a busy skate park where there's a lot of people around and you can just weave in between everyone. Or whenever I'm skating transition and I'm whipping around in the bowl corners, it feels really good. As for the differences between these and Thunder trucks, I would say that Thunder trucks are better suited to straight line type of skateboarding, like technical ledge and manual tricks or big gaps and stair skating where you want your trucks to be really stable and reliable. And independent trucks will be more suited to directional skateboarding. So skating bowl, skating transition, but they also help with ledge and rail skating as well since they turn sharper and as a result they pinch sharper as well so it's really good for grinding ledges and rails. So neither one is better than the other it just depends on what style of skating you do to what brand of trucks that are going to suit you better. To get a deeper look at the Thunder Hollow light trucks check out this video right here and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!